On behalf of the Military Affairs Council of the Chamber of Hawaii, thank you all very much for joining us here today. I am Bill Wilson. I am the president and former president and now chairman of Hawaiian Dredging Construction Company and serve as the chair of the Training and Readiness Committee of the Chamber's Military Affairs Council. The mission of the Military Affairs Council is to promote, preserve, and protect military missions and installations in Hawaii. I think the community is generally aware that the military is the second largest component of the economy of the state of Hawaii. Obviously, they've been here for many years, and today they're spending almost $9 billion a year and are the creator of approximately 100,000 jobs. In excess of 15% of the jobs in the state of Hawaii depend upon uh, the work that we do with the military. With the federal budget facing unprecedented challenges uh, in the large deficits through the years, uh, the passage of sequestration several years ago, uh, the financial issues of supporting the military across the United States and their training efforts continue to grow. Our efforts now are to, to support the effort, the community, to help the military understand their choices as they consider uh, the changes that might occur. The national competition is significant. Other communities that have had military presence for many years, working very hard to continue to maintain and in fact, in some cases, expand their opportunities, given their close proximity to training in other areas that permit their, the people staffed there to maintain the highest level of readiness. It's time for all of us across the state to come together and support the military here in Hawaii. We are honored to have uh, the members of, of our congressional delegation serving as the honorary chairs of our group here and uh, the presence today of our newest member of the Congress, Mark Takai. In just a few minutes, you'll hear from him. But now I'd like to introduce for our, our two co-chairs, Mayor Kirk Caldwell and Carol Kai Anoy. Mayor Caldwell. Good morning and aloha. aloha. It's great to be standing with all of you this morning on a Sunday uh, where there's much peace on our island. And it makes me think back to the history of our relationship with the military that goes all the way back to the days of the Kingdom of Hawaii uh, when the issue of Pearl Harbor came up and the Kingdom, King Kalakaua, was looking at improving the re relationship with the United States. And from those early beginnings, we've grown and evolved in 1909, just two, two days from now, um, President Taft accepted a report recognizing the importance of military as the forward base for our military in the Pacific. This is before we became a superpower. This is before World War I or II. Uh, the importance of the military here was critical to our country. And from that time, we've moved forward. I know when I was a kid, I would see pictures of the military in those days playing polo. Uh, with the high muckamucks of Oahu. It, much has changed since then. And I think someone who had a critical role in changing that relationship and having it affect us at the grassroots was our senior senator, Daniel K. Anoy. Uh, when he became our senator, he recognized the importance almost immediately, and he embraced the military here in Hawaii and in the nation, and they embraced him back. And by embracing him, they embraced all of us on this island and in this state in so many critical ways. And so from the 60s and 70s, when there was much controversy with the military and the residents of this island and our other islands, through his hard work and the hard work of others in our community, we established a very solid, close working relationship. So to this day, around this island and neighbor islands, you see the military stepping up and volunteering in so many different ways. From fun runs, to cleaning up our parks, to helping raise money, to being there in times of need. Um, they are there. And we're there for them too in crisis, helping them as they leave to go to faraway places like Iraq and Afghanistan. And we share in their sadness and we try to help their families who are left behind. But it's important that we continue to do that and to show this aloha. And so as mayor, we formed a working group 
working with the MAC, where I meet with the mayors of this island. And they're not mayors in, the, in terms of being elected, but they're the commanders of the different military bases on this island. And about a month and a half ago, we had our first meeting. And it was a really, really good meeting right here in this room. Surrounded around the table were all the different branches of our military bases. We talked about how we can help each other more. And here's an example, almost a, an immediate result of that discussion. They said, you know, Kirk, we want to be involved when you have a major natural disaster. There are so many people in the room at the state and county levels, but the military is not at the table. We have assets that can help you. And of course, we want to know what you know, because we have to worry about whether we ask our ships to leave harbors, whether we have to tie down things at our different bases. And so we want to know what you're talking about. But we too have many assets that we can provide to you in turn. And so we said yes. And so when Hurricane Ana arrived, the military was at the table. And at one point, I picked up the phone and called one of the commanders whose weather reporting may in some ways equal that of the natural, National Weather Service or even exceed it. And he was giving us real-time information about the fact that Ana was not going to come to Oahu, which helped me in not issuing a disaster declaration, which helped all of us not have to go through the expense of ramping up and then ramping down. This is a good example of that partnership growing and improving that we value very much. And we're going to continue to meet on a quarterly basis to keep this relationship growing even stronger. But here's the, here's the concern. Our country and our military has done such a good job that we're in a period of, of relative peace today. And so the military is once again looking at downsizing, just like they have through other periods after the Vietnam War. And we understand that has to happen. But the thing we don't want to see happen is we don't want to see cuts being made here to bases on this island that will have a dramatic impact on our community. It's somewhat selfish, but we also believe the military offers a lot to the nation in terms of that Pacific pivot and the security that they bring to our country by being stationed here in Hawaii, about as close to Asia as you can possibly get and still be in America. And so what they're talking about is that perhaps if some of these suggestions and recommendations go through, they would cut our military at places like Schofield Barracks by 16,200 people. That's a lot. At Fort Shafter, 4,000 people cut. And that is really scary because with those cuts, if they were to happen, we could lose an additional 30,000 people. Those are the families and others who come out with the military. That's a 5% reduction to the population of Oahu. But more importantly, what does it do to our businesses around these bases and throughout this island? It would be devastating. We saw what happened after, um, after the um, Afghani Afghanistan and Iraq crisis. Kaneohe got very quiet. People were impacted. Can you imagine what Wahiwa would feel like with that many people cut? Businesses like Dots that I went to as a kid, my dad would make his rounds up at Wahiwa General Hospital, go to Dots first, buy donut holes, park the car, put me in the grass and let me run around. I'd eat my donut holes and he'd make his rounds. But Dots has been there for all of us and the military too. But just one small example of the impact it would have on some of our legacy communities around the island, from Wahiwa to Mililani, Pearl City, Aia, that's not good. And then our farmers, we talk about farming. We talk about large farming and small farming, and our small local farmers provide a lot of produce to these bases. And if we reduce the personnel by 20,000, that means a lot less produce being purchased, which means our farmers have a harder time making ends meet when we want to see them succeed. So I'm here today as mayor and as, as co-chair of this effort to send a message that Oahu and the state of Hawaii embraces our military. We want to let them know that we support them being here. We don't want them to leave or reduce the level of personnel out here in any way. We want to send that message loud and clear to Washington, D.C. and to the commanders here on this island and in the state. And that's why it's so great to see so many people here today that can deliver that message. But there's no one better to deliver that message in my mind than Carol Kai Anoy, or more commonly known as Carol Kai. You know, she is an amazing person. I've watched her in my time as managing director and mayor do this run that she does to help our military and raises, what, a million dollars or spends a million dollars on this effort every year. And it just grows 
I remember the old days when I was in the beds down at, down at Kalakaua, you know, by Kapilani Park, and it's growing now to this incredible event where you see the military running and cooperating along with our local folks. It's part of that engagement and connectedness that she leads. And her energy and her positiveness is so contagious that I think she can even convince the most hardcore person who wants to yank troops from Hawaii to at least keep an open heart and mind to reconsidering an effort like that. So I want to introduce Carol Kai now. She has crutches. I just found, she was, found out she was in Germany riding a bike, and the bike won. You know, our, the Army runs so deep in my family. Every single member, male member of my family has been either an Army person and two Air Force, uh, Daryl Wong, <laughs> yeah, uh, two Air Force, but most of them have been in the Army. And so uh, the history of the Army bases run, runs very deep here in the community. In fact, my TV company um, was so in love with the military, I mean, me, so in love with the military, that we've done eight specials and the uh, Army has been so kind to us and so generous in opening their bases for us to do these uh, specials on them. And in, in addition to preserving our freedom and protecting the peace for Hawaii, um, we love the military because they're a critical part of the fabric of Hawaii. And without the military's presence, we will be in a dire situation. Um, make no mistake about that. The military actively participates in the Great Aloha Run. In fact, for the bed race, when we started it, we had to change all the rules because the Army won every single year for four <laughs> years uh, under General Brooks. And so we said, nobody's going to run because the Army always wins. So we had to change our whole format and we had to go into different divisions instead of just making it, you know, anybody can enter. Uh, so that's how uh, important the Army was. And for the Great Aloha Run, to see the Army and uh, the other um, divisions, uh, um, military sectors, come out and participate in the Great Aloha Run gives the people from all over the world and from the mainland a great sense of, ah, when they hear the uh, Army going down the, um, or the National Guard or the Air Force or the Marines going down the streets and, and chanting. And it gives a great sense of pride in Ho for Hawaii to see that. And, you know, they also support Toys for Tots and um, school activities, community activities. They're so much a part of our fabric. And we really, really need the Army here. Um, if you're listening to us up there, please realize that even though we're small, well, we're mighty and small, so please help us. Um, so in addition to the Great Aloha Run, the Army supports many other organizations, and the Great Aloha Run has responded as well as the other uh, community organizations and, and um, companies, hundreds of them in the state of Hawaii, uh, supporting the Army here from Wounded Warriors, Fisher House, um, the individual brigades when um, 25 members of the 2nd Brigade went down um, in Iraq. Uh, they had no money for coffins and, and flower, floral wreaths. So the Great Aloha Run wanted to be there to respond and say, hey, we love you, we love you, we care. And, um, and we helped them to erect a monument there. But we're just one of many who do these things. And I know about it because I was part of it. But, you know, there's so many more organizations that help. So we, um, we need to let the Army and the military up there in um, their high hill know that we support them and we love them and we embrace them as well. Um, you know, I can't say enough, but each and every one of you here, here, I know you love Hawaii, and I know that you can make an impact. And we would like to see each and every one of you do your part. Even if it's reaching out to five people, you can make a difference. Um, 
when Dane, bless his heart, met with um, Claire and myself from the Great Aloha Run and Jean Hagi, um, we, we were meeting at a coffee shop and I saw some ladies, I said, hey, Jeannie, come over here. We're gonna, we, we gotta uh, get, uh, we gotta get over 100,000 signatures. You're gonna help. She said, of course. And she's, uh, she owns Segway of Hawaii. So she said, I'm gonna get 3,500 signatures. I'm gonna go to everybody in my condo complex. And she's gonna get, so you know, it can be infectious. So if you, and each of you is a leader in your own right here, if, if each and every one of you goes out and says, hey, we need your help, we gotta get over 100,000 signatures, who knows, we might get 200 or 300,000 signatures. Let's go get them because you know what? We started with only 30 and Fort Polk, Louisiana got 14,000. What's that? We, we give more to the military than they could ever hope to do. So let's do it, okay? Thank you, I'm honored to be a co-chair. Thank you both, Mayor and Carol. It's now my pleasure to introduce uh, Scott Harada, who's a third generation owner and operator of Dots Restaurant. Scott? Um, thank you for uh, having me here to uh, share a few things about uh, uh, our relationship with the military and the importance of, of that connection. It, you know, it's been reported that the, the communities that are going to be affected, and we all know this in our hearts, um, right around Schofield, Wahiwa, Wailua, um, Mililani, um, Kunia, are going to be really impacted, as we've seen every time that there's been a deployment. Um, so we know the cycle of deployment and we understand the impact and that's why um, I'm here to speak um, from my heart to know that this is a, a, a real concern for us because 17,000, 16,200 uh, troops going out um, is equivalent as it's reported to, to sort of impact up to 38% of certain of these populations, which is pretty drastic, um, maybe even a, affect up to about 20,000 jobs in the area which is pretty severe when our population in Wahiwa is roughly about 85,000. Um, so if you consider those numbers, it's a pretty big hit for us. Um, another uh, report uh, says that if this is kind of equivalent to losing the state's non-government non, uh, non employer like three times over. So I am put these kinds of numbers into perspective. Um, that's how I kind of understood it as a business owner. Um, as I mentioned, the deployments have happened over the years during war times and things, and we've seen in some of our business, especially in Wahiwa, up to a 30% impact on our, on our bottom line and our, just our gross revenue. So that's huge for us um, in a time when margins are being pinched into the middle as it is. Um, this is a serious concern for our business community. Um, so, you know, um, when you think about, like, local businesses, small business owners, you know, com small communities, rural communities like us, um, like dots, businesses like dots, um, you, you kind of get to understand that our relationship with the, with the soldiers is economic. But I want to also stress that it, they are an intricate and a vital part of who we are. We've grown up as Wahiwa with the military. We've developed through the military. The military has actually made Wahiwa what it is. Um, so I would like to convey that message of our our connection from heart to heart to the military. Um, we are neighbors, um, we support them, they support us in our pineapple festivals and all the other community events that I'm, I'm involved with and, and I'm, I'm very grateful for all the military um, for their presence over the many years and I really hope that we can um, provide this, these signatures to keep them here um, moving forward and to stay here. Uh, thank you for your time, I appreciate it. Also joining us today is Doug Hatton, who's with the Wahiwa Business Association. As you're well aware, for many de decades, Wahiwa has been a hosting community for many military installations. Schofield Barracks, Wheeler Field, Naval Base Command, the training areas of East Range, the Corps allows. Each installation has a history of many deployments, and, e and with each deployment, we have felt the adverse socioeconomic impacts to our businesses, schools, and churches. Our businesses have evolved into successful businesses that have been heavily dependent on the military and their dependents. The command staff, the soldiers, their, their dependents have been woven in into the community fabric, and that partnership ma makes our town a very unique place to live. Wyoa has always welcomed and embraced the military 
Uh, please help us in our efforts to keep our military heroes intact and in place. And again, we really thank you for giving Waiwa a voice in this effort. Aloha and thank you. It's now my pleasure to introduce our newest congressman, Mark Takai. I'd give you a longer introduction, but I think you all know who he is. <laughs> Mark, please. It is a critical time for Hawaii to put our best foot forward to support and keep our army here in Hawaii and in Oahu. And I had the pleasure of serving in the Hawaii State Legislature for 20 years, and most recently as the chair of the Military and Veterans Affairs Committee. And we, as colleagues, uh, Ryan Yamane and Aaron Johansson and Ron Menor, as a former member of the legislature, we, have, we as colleagues have championed the efforts at the legislature, at the state level, uh, supporting our veterans and military for many years. And I'd like to continue to do that as a member of Congress. For the past 15 years, I've served in the Hawaii Army National Guard and it's been my pleasure serving alongside many people. So I wanted to, at this time, just give a shout out. And if we can recognize all the, all the military service members here today. <laughs> I'm honored to join Hawaii's congressional delegation, Senator Brian Schatz, Senator Maisie Hirono, and Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard to serve as honorary chairs of Keep Hawaii's Heroes. The petition is available here for those of you here. Um, but also online, for those of you not here, uh, at www.keephawaiisheroes.org. So we encourage you to join us. It's so very important. You know, we, we recognize the, the importance and the strength of the military uh, for decades uh, for Hawaii. And it's our turn, our opportunity, our chance to step up and show our appreciation to the military and their families. Thank you very much. As we close this press conference, I'd like to invite uh, the Keep the Hawaii Heroes Chairs, Carol and the Mayor, uh, uh, Congressman-elect Mark Takai, uh, and the members of the MAC to join me in, in signing the petition first. Um, and I certainly want to thank everyone here today for coming and your support and your efforts in the months ahead. Yeah.